So, um, again, this is a little bit of tips and tricks on how to go about just creating a quest that has some nonlinearity in it. Um, my, I'll talk a little bit about you know breaking it into pieces that are easier to work with and, and developing maybe a system for some more complicated interactions like um, AI parts. Uh, but the main advice I give anybody is just to write one thing at a time. And a good starting point is just writing one path through a conversation. So, uh, you know, typical stuff we'll write in, in the writing class will have, you know, a conversation. This is supposed to be a conversation. Blue lines of dialogue. But it will vary based on a variable. So this pink thing is supposed to be a variable. So maybe that's whether the player went through with an assassination or saved the character or something like that. It could be just some choice the players made. And if you try to sit down and write something like this and think about the range of possibilities of how an NPC might react, it just you hit a wall pretty quickly. Writing's hard enough, just just writing a, a, a scene. So you know, my recommendation is just think about one scenario. The player has gone through the assassination, and the NPC feels a certain way. You know, pick the strongest reaction maybe that the NPC might have, and so that might give you the easiest starting point. And just write one one path through the way you know. Uh, that scenario would play out. And then you can go back and say, well, okay, what if the player did something else? How much of this would be the same? How much would change? And strangely, it turns out that a big chunk of the content can be reused. I don't know why this actually plays out in games. We can have a character respond super angrily, like, oh my gosh, that was my wife you, you, were, you murdered out there, blah, blah, blah. And then within two lines of dialogue, they can be saying, well, we got to get up on that mountain next and get the, uh, the machine gun or whatever it is, you know? Somehow the, the tone of the dialogue plays out even with recorded speech, and you can kind of get <coughs> with, with doing that sort of thing. Um, so anyway, that's the first tip. Just kind of write one path first. Um, similarly, um, in terms of logic, if you build out a quest that's with this interactive toolkit I'll show, um, you often just kind of want to think in terms of what an individual character might care about. This is kind of one step up in the abstraction from that conversation I just showed, where the Princess might have a couple conversations, so this is like a delivery quest. You might meet her the first time, and she'll have a conversation. She talks about what she needs to have, have you do. And she has a mental state where she's waiting for you to do it, um, and, and then she cares about the second variable. You know, when you've actually delivered the, the item, maybe the soldier only cares about whether you you shown up with the with the letter or not that, that she wants you to deliver. Uh, but if you kind of think about what one character cares about, you know, just keep your you're thinking in that space. It's a lot simpler than trying to figure out well what's the whole flow through um, this whole you know tragedy if you want to, you want to get across in the quest. So you kind of divide and conquer here. Um, so another thing, and this I feel like some of this stuff might be kind of obscure if you're not already in code, kind of messing with this stuff. But um, there's always this uh, urge to track every little thing the player does and express it back to the player. So I said every choice has to have a consequence. Um, I think that's true, but one of the mistakes I made early on writing in games was that I wanted to have a character remember every line you, you, you told them. Right? So I had top choices for a, a guy at the beginning of the game, and gave you three choices. You could be rude to him, you could be nice, you could you know, be curious, whatever. And then the next mission you saw him, I gave you three more choices. Get the three more choices. And my thought was I had these nice, subtle, different you know, conversations that would happen down the road based on these, these choices the player made. And I realized pretty quickly if I did it a third time, I'd be just completely lost. Because with th with two choices of three, that's like nine different possible emotional states for the NPC, and then it goes up like 27 or something. Um, so you really you don't want to necessarily track every choice the player makes to that kind of granularity. But what you can do is, is say, well, what we really care about is whether this character likes the player or hates the player. It was just that simple. Maybe there's three states. And so as the player's making choices and doing things in the world, um, maybe you're just kind of moving the needle between these, these two states. It could be points. I, mean, I think this is, why, this is why the mechanism of light and dark has become pretty popular in games, just letting you be bad or good, and just kind of moving the needle one way or the other, and then at some point you cross the threshold and characters start to hate you and react differently. Um, it's easier to, to write for. You only have two states or so to write for than a character. It's easier for players to understand. Um, players really can't understand that, that the nuance beyond, uh, I think, a few states. So the, the, the upshot of that is basically um, be thinking in terms of the basic, simple states a character could be in. This is a dog here, which is not quite the best example, but 
it could be three emotional states, and this is, you know, what in computer science is called a state machine, where you just have an entity that, you know, is in a certain state, and they'll be saying certain barks, certain like reactions to the player, and then at some point, if you've done enough things to irritate them, they move to another state, and they're now for you in your quest or your, your conversation, it's just a new flock of responses. Um, the player feels like they've done several things and, and finally made a person mad. It feels, from the player side, I think, uh, somewhat fluid and, and human. So they've actually had what they feel like might be a second chance or they kind of push somebody too far. Like that kind of thing. Um, so I'm almost, I'm almost done. I'm just going to show a couple more possible approaches to doing a quest. I'm about to show some code and, and some, a toolkit to build, actually build out a quest in, in software. But a lot of writers work in tools developed by the design teams. It's often done, it's almost always the case that in a game studio, studio back that whole notion out to some kind of system where you say, well, we're going to have civilians in the world and they have five emotional states or ten, whatever it is. And the writer comes up with just, they fill in the buckets, basically. Like, okay, this character's scared, they're, they're angry, or something weird's going on in the environment, like you broke a window nearby. What are the five kind of flavors of, of of emotion that they may have, and to define those <coughs> with some kind of system, and then you go and kind of fill in the blanks as, as a writer. Um, slight digression, but just a sort of a somewhat fluid system for that, where you have uh, an AI state, which is, is, knows about uh, green alerts, yellow alerts, red alerts, so some kind of staging of typical AI interactions, but the writer has some freedom to add some semantic information. So. The writer writes some lines, very generic lines for doing work, like, oh, what's going on? And then you can, if, if the writer imagines the guard knowing that he has an ally nearby, and knowing that uh, he's heard something, you can write a more specific you know, piece of dialogue that matches that, that amount of game state. So, um, <coughs> for anyone that you guys don't want to go quest writing, but I think the notion is, uh, as much as you can abstract out a system for this stuff, just like this previous one here, I'm going to write deliver quest while I'm like this. You know, the, the more you save yourself some grief uh, in terms of just building out the full full logic and the full script. So, those are my just general thoughts on quest. I'm going to say a few thoughts before just showing some code. Code's kind of dry. Any, any thoughts on, on that?